Yeah. I have another question for you about um, going back to the contracts and maybe it goes with your advice on what state you are, but what should you do every time you have as a freelancer, a new client and you're setting up that contract? Do you have to get, you have to pay for a lawyer to look over that or what, like what's the most efficient way to do that? With each no, so you should just have one solid contract <laughs> and, and ideally it should be, need very, very minor tweaks per client. So you can have an attorney draft your initial contract. You can join my membership and get a template, okay. but you get your template up and running. And then really the only thing you should ever need to change is your scope of services. Okay. And ideally everything should be productized. So do you teach all your people like productized services or what's your system? No, no. no? Tell everyone what that is. Yeah. Well, generally a productized service is just, um, it's pretty prescriptive, right? So you're not doing a ton of custom quotes. You're like, I offer this, 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 and this for this price. Um, so usually when you have like packages on your website, that's a productized service, or you just do hourly rates. So if you're doing yeah. hourly rates, that's super easy because if you get a contract that's already pre-drafted for hourly services, the only thing you need to change is maybe if you decide that you're going to build this client at $30 and this client at $40. You're just going to change that number in your contract. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that totally makes sense. It frustrates me because I feel like it's got to be an easier process, but yet I have, I've seen it backfire where you do have to resort to the, the, the contract, like when things are due, when payment is due, you know, we get these like clients who usually don't mean to, but they don't pay or they're like trying to rush jobs and, um, you know, or they want, what, what would you do with a client who like demands documentation and that's not in the, the, the contract? Have you ever heard of that before? Because a lot of us do hourly rates because we're doing all of the things, right? Yeah, I would just tell them no. Okay. But also you can, like if you want, so I always tell people you don't want to put too many obligations on yourself in a contract, obviously, right? Yeah. But if you are like, ideally you should be tracking your time. And right. then you can at least provide your time tracking. Like you don't need to give them like a personal journal journal or ledger or anything yeah. like that. But you can provide them that. That's helpful. The other tip I would give people with contracts, and I, this is mostly with newer business owners. Newer business owners are always hesitant to have contracts because they feel like it's ask, like for whatever reason, it's asking a lot. And what I always tell people is I view contracts as just a point of professionalism. So if you have a sound and solid contract, it's actually going to trust, it's going to make me trust you more entering into this relationship. Yeah. Because whenever I hire someone, and the past couple of people I've hired have not had contracts, I'm like, where's your contract? They said they don't have one. And then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, like, is this person just kind of playing business? Or are they serious about business? I want to make sure that they have, you know, that they are taking care of me, especially, especially, especially when I'm hiring people to do something that I don't really know, because I want them to know, I want to know that they know what they're doing, because I'm not going to be able to give them step by step directions. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that is genius advice right now for everyone out there watching this catching the replay, come up with a contract and lead with a contract because you will look smarter. And you will look legit and Brayden will trust you. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. It, no, and I totally get that because a lot of our, um, you know, clients are are newer. We're their first hire. They don't know what's happening. They're really depending on us to kind of lead them. We're so more than just a VA. And that step with a contract, you know, to show that would just like put you on the next level. Like, you know. Yeah. And it's also like you have to think about and this is something that I've been kind of struggling with. I've hired my first couple of VAs. And then I've also I hired a Pinterest person to set up my Pinterest account. And there's always this give and take of are you my contractor and I'm your boss or you're sending me your contract and I'm your client. So like yeah. who's telling who what to do? And it kind of depends on what yeah. they're being hired for. So like I have a community manager and I have a tech VA. And for those two roles, I consider myself basically to be their boss. They're part of my team on a contract basis. But if I hired like a web designer to build out my website, I'm their client and they are kind of telling me what to do. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, totally. And so I think a contract really helps outline all that kind of stuff and like the deliverables, all these sorts of things. Yeah, there's, there's this gray area and this is fun to explore with you because... So many of 
you know, the freelancers in my course are much more than a VA. And starting up, starting off on that, <laughs> it's kind of like, where is the, where is the power? <laughs> you know, yeah. like starting off there is just more professional. And I think that would uh, just be better for the relationship. And then I think it helps with your own mindset because when the client doesn't do what they're saying, like so many are slow, like they don't get their stuff when you need it, like their side of the work isn't happening. And then we're left kind of dangling over here. I think that gives people the power and the mindset to say, done, we're over. <laughs> yeah, you need, you need to have all of that in your contract. Like, mm -hmm. for example, I was just talking about this with one of my students the other day. She's a web designer. And in all my graphic design and web design contracts, we have what we call a restart fee which is essentially if your client's non-responsive for a certain period of time, they have to pay you a fee to restart the project. Because essentially you're like, I sent you all of your website materials three months ago and you never responded. So I've essentially archived your project because you decided that you weren't gonna work on it with me anymore. So if you wanna get started again, I gotta work you back into my calendar, I have to get everything unarchived. And so you're gonna have to pay me this $500 fee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's mentally taxing to switch your context and go back into a project where you had made progress and now you got to start over. So what? Yes. I have never heard of that. I'm loving it. Uh, how long should like what? How long should that duration be for the startup for the, for the fizzle out period? <laughs> yeah, it, well, it really depends on your services, right? So yeah. if your services are supposed to be like if your services are supposed to be turned over in a week, then I would only like if they're a full week behind in communicating to you, that's probably sufficient. But if it's a pro like a six month long project, then maybe you want to give them like a month. Yeah. It, yeah. Like it, it depends. Cause I've hired people, like I just hired my typesetter on Friday for my book and due to my timeline, like I ideally want that back by Wednesday. So that's like a five day project. So if she emails me today and she needs a file from me, she's not going to be able to meet her deadline if I don't get back to her, like ideally within like three to four hours, but hopefully no longer than 12. Um, so I would say if I went and ghosted her for like four days, then she would be like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Like she might, she might want to pause the project. And she, and she'll just add to the deadline and not feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. I had a student recently whose client ghosted her over the summer and it turns out she had, you know, stuff happen in her life. Oh, granted, people will always have excuses. And there was a little bit of a like a tiff um, for lack of better word. But, um, you know, I feel like the at the heart of it is communication. Like if something like that is going to happen. Right. Uh, but now, you know, it, it's weird when there's a retainer and there's expectations and like you're not when you there's rollover hours and then the rollout over hours die a death because they didn't use them. And then that's kind of what happened. Hopefully you can figure me out. I'm like so not articulate right now. Yeah, no worries. So that always blows my mind. I've never hired someone and not been promptly communicative to them. I'm paying you money. If you need something for me, why would I not respond? So if someone ghosts you, there's absolutely no excuse for that in my mind. Like they can, sure, they can say, well, I had someone in my family pass or I got coronavirus myself, but it doesn't take more than two minutes to send a three sentence email to say this, this, and this has happened. I'm going to be out of work for the next two months. We need to put this on pause. Like, how do we proceed with that? Yeah. Like just take care of it like a grown up. 